You can hate him and reject him, but his love for you is still the same. That's true love. This is how people are going to be like in the final generation. Merciless, ungrateful, impossible to show understanding to anyone. This is how they will look to Jesus and feel him and feel about him. Mocking and laughing at him as a, as a sacrifice and everything he did. And also laughing at the people at the end of time who will still be promoting Jesus. This is how terrible it's going to get. This is the great multitude. All the saints and true believers from the rapture and from the first resurrection gathered together in heaven. They will all be given golden crowns, pristine white robes. They, they will all be eternal and ageless. There will be millions of them. All of them will be given a golden mansion. They shall have life everlasting and they will never suffer again. The great multitude are the luckiest people in infinity. Here are them all together, gathered in celebration, to celebrate. This is when somebody prays, is praying. This is how they look like on the left, and this is how they look like on the right. When you pray, you are putting on the armor of God, and the sword of God, the shield of God. You become a warrior of the truth if you proclaim the gospel in the Bible. This is Jesus, God himself, extending a hand to you to rescue you and save you. And this is how it's going to be at the end of the world. This is how all people are going to be like. They're all going to be unbelievers. And they won't be able to stand and listen to the truth anymore. They will all be distracted and beyond hope. There are billions of them. And back here in the background... Here is a person who believes in the truth, or that's Jesus himself, and everybody is too busy to listen or pay any attention. And this is how it's going to be in the end. And this is why people are going to take the mark of the beast, because they, they reject that person in the background and what he did and what he's trying to tell them. Here he is again trying to signal them and yell at them, but they just won't listen. No matter what we think and feel about these people here, we shouldn't condemn them because we should feel sorry for them because they will never feel sorry for us. 
and this is how everyone's gonna be like in the end and this is why people are gonna take the mark of the beast because they have, sh they have shown their back to the truth their entire life and they can only go in one direction and that is the mark of the beast here is again Christ with his army of angels the trumpets are gonna sound and the final events are gonna take place and every, every angel knows what to do, they are all prepared. Everyone knows what to do. At the final hour. The seven trumpets. There are seven trumpets, seven seals, and seven bowls of punishments. Seven, seven, seven. And seven angels holding each one of those objects. Now the meaning of this picture is, this is God the Father holding the Son who is holding everyone on earth, or at least the believers. And this is people's only hope. Reaching a hand to the Son, the Son of God and God Himself, who is holding the hand of God the Father. And this is people's only hope. Christ is the rope of a bridge to salvation. The meaning of this picture is Jesus is knocking. It means that time is running out and he is knocking to people to listen to the truth and to reject this world and to believe and trust in him and his sacrifice. That's why he's knocking because time is running out and all these people behind the door are in danger. In eternal peril. Here is Christ himself again on the throne. He looks so happy. And you have a trumpet sounding and the great moment unfolding. Christ, this is Christ sending his angels to warn people and to gather the true believers so they could be marked and protected. This is known as the Great White Throne Room. There are going to be two judgments. The Judgment Seat of Christ is only for believers. The Judgment Seat of Christ is only to determine what kinds of rewards the believers will get. The Great White Throne Room is only for the unbelievers. All unbelievers are going to be gathered in the great white throne room and they're all going to be judged and they're all going to be thrown in the lake of fire. Because there was no truth in them. The great white throne room is a terrifying and horrific place. You don't want to be there. The Great White Throne Room is 1,000 years after the first resurrection and after the Judgment Seat of Christ. The Great White Throne Room is only for all unbelievers who have ever lived. And this is an angel showing one of the prophets of the Golden City, the New Jerusalem, that's going to... That in which all unbelie in which all believers are going to live together with Christ forever on the new earth. This is what the Golden City will look like. It will have four walls made of jasper with twelve gates, three on each side, and this is how the prophets wrote the Bible. One of the angels took the prophets 2,000 plus years into the future and showed them all the events that were going to take place, including the Golden City. And this is how the prophets were ever to write the Bible. They were given visions and even taken into the future. And this is how the Bible was written. And here is a person, presumably in hell or in a dark pit.
and here is the two angels rescuing him and leaning him up to heaven or to the light. This is the meaning if you accept Christ and believe in the truth. You still can be saved. Even if you're almost out of hope, almost out of time.